Like most everything on this earth, whether it be a home, machinery, relationship, foundations matter. Hey everyone, my name is Sam and welcome back to Sam Craft. I want to welcome you to a very special video and that is the beginning and making of a shop project. Wait, I do a lot of those, don't I? In this video, I'm taking you through the full build of a custom designed by me, CNC table made out of plywood and for under a hundred bucks. What I've got for you today is a budget build for a not so budget item to sit on top of. And this is gonna be something that's gonna be vital for you if you're watching this. If you found me through Google search, YouTube search, or search any search, you are already looking for it. And that is a Shapoko Pro CNC table. I'm over here. So, so that way now. Yep. 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 Oh. Let's go. All right, so let's jump into the overall steps of building this thing. First of all, get your set of plans. You don't have plans, you say? Don't worry. There's a link down below. Oh yeah, salesman to the max. I started off this project by taking my two sheets of plywood and cutting them to approximately 61 inches in width and leaving the other part 48 inches. This gives me, one, the top for my table, and two, other pieces of good enough size to then rip and cut all the other pieces from themselves. This is not Baltic birch. I couldn't get that. So this is the next best thing sold from the big blue colored box hardware store in my area. This is three quarter inch sized plywood with multiple layers, multiple laminations. That was the number one thing I was looking for. It's something that was honestly as close to Baltic birch as I could find on the shelf. With the exception of the top, pretty much every single other piece of this table is made from three inch wide strips of various lengths. I tried to make this very simple, very easy as far as cuts, nothing fancy, nothing elaborate, no different width things, and really just make it easy on myself to make and hope that it actually turned out right. All of my pieces are cut to length and width according to my plans, so now I can go ahead and start assembling the legs. Each leg is made up of two pieces of plywood connected together to form, effectively, a long angle piece of plywood. The joints are glued and tacked together with brad nails and then followed up by pre-drilling holes and attaching screws in. With all the leg pieces done, I can go ahead and start to assemble these shorter skirts. Is that what it's called? Aprons? I don't know. Sides of the table. It's going to be these right here. I say shorter because it's shorter than the long side, but at four feet wide, it's going to kind of dominate the work area. I'm going to go ahead and assemble the two sides of the table first, the shorter ones, and then probably move it in place behind me to then put the longer sides together. So we kind of a interesting experiment in can I build all this on my smaller table saw assembly table setup here 
But if nothing else, there's always the flow. this side of the table done. The way I designed this, it forced me to build the longer sides first, so it is what it is. But this is done. I'm now going to take this and lay it flat over there on the floor in the corner so that it can glue and set up on its own in a flat space. But go ahead and build the copycat or replica mirror image. I can go ahead and figure out what I'm going to say. I think that's a good stopping point for this evening. It's getting kind of late and honestly my floor is now covered with two table pieces that I want to allow it to sit and lay flat and let the glue set up overnight and just become rock solid and stable. So see you guys in a second which will be tomorrow for me but just a second for you. It's like magic. Welcome to the next day. My long table pieces have set up and cured and are ready for the next step. I'm gonna go ahead and move everything over into the corner or at least onto the floor as my main work surface and begin gluing and attaching the side pieces to finish building out the table's frame. Here's a look at how I'm marking and putting glue on these sideboards. I'm using my Craig, um, I don't know, multi-measuring tool. This thing is really cool. I've got it set to the depth that the L brackets or the corners of the legs cover. And so I just run this down each end. And I know exactly my lines to put the glue and not put the glue. I'm using Gorilla Wood Glue because it's white. Um, it's not that I'm tied to one brand of glue versus another but I do like the fact this is a white glue instead of a yellow since this plywood is majorly white. It's been a couple of hours since gluing this all together and the glue is fully cured and everything's good to go. And I can go ahead and take the clamps off and now begin to glue on, I want to say kind of like stiffening up the skirts or aprons of the table, these horizontal pieces at the top. I'm going to make them all double thick and they're going to lock in with the legs in a sense to try and keep the legs from racking or twisting. So I'm going to go ahead and glue those into place and probably clamp them if it looks like they need extra holding power, I'll put some brads in from the back side. But my goal with this is to really give a nice clean, fastener-free 
face or a presentation to the table. top rail of the table is glued and clamped together and now it's time to sit and let that set up and get stiff and do its stuff that glue does. While I wait I want to go ahead and go to where the legs attach to the pieces that are already glued in place, pre-drill, countersink, and drive a couple of screws in there so that I have a mechanical fastener in addition to the glue face fastening to keep everything good and tight. So my friend Kevin over from Making Sawdust came up with an idea how we could exchange a couple of hostages from our workshops and mutually benefit each other. I exchanged one gently used, never really worn because it didn't fit me, shop apron. And he exchanged four heavy duty, gently used because he's in a dungeon workshop, heavy duty casters. He only sent four because he's cheap. No, I'm just joking. He only had four, so he only sent four. And I went ahead and stuck the four of those on the table the other night late and didn't film it. So, oh my gosh, sue me. I stuck the casters on the table as a, hmm, let's see how it works out. I don't know if I'd like it or not situation, and I like it. Obviously, one of the biggest benefits of having the table on wheels is being able to move it very easily. I am a little concerned about if it's going to be too jiggly for the CNC and affect it from an accuracy standpoint, but I won't know that until the machine actually arrives and I run some tests. Even though I only have four casters on the table, it's still strong enough for me to continue along with this process and design. I'll just want to make sure I have the two installed and everything before the CNC actually arrives. Those casters do make it very handy for moving around, which is going to be beneficial because the next step is to add the shelf supports underneath the table. In preparation of the two new casters that I've ordered showing up and becoming useful, I need to go ahead and beefen up these middle legs a little bit to give the casters a big enough, strong enough surface to mount on so they actually do their job and they don't end up twisting or not doing what I want them to do. 
The next thing I'm going to do is take what's left of these sheet goods from this project, rip them into three inch wide strips and certain length to add me a slatted shelf on the main part of the table down below to give myself some material storage. You might be wondering why the middle leg of the table is not centered left to right to better handle the distribution of weight from the machine. And I did that for two reasons. One, having a larger shelf over to the left allows me to store large sheet goods for the CNC. It didn't really make sense to me to have a machine that could cut say a 33 inch wide piece, build a storage shelf, but that shelf itself not be able to hold a 33 inch wide piece as well. In addition to that, it also gives me a smaller area to which I can insert a panel and that can be a mounting surface for my emergency stop switch, any kind of other controls, possibly a variable speed regulator in the future, who knows? Think of it as an onboard breakout panel or switch mounting place for any kind of customizations, fancy pants stuffs, or essentials you may add to your CNC in the future. I'm at the point where I can either wait a couple of days for the casters or go ahead and install the top. Let's keep this progress gravy train rolling and go ahead and put the top on the table base. I'm going to dry fit it first and get it exactly in the position that I want. Then put some reference marks with a pencil on the edges and then I will lift it up, lay down some glue all over the place, put it back down and screw it probably. Or I might brad nail it. Either way, the screws or brad nails are just going to hold it in place until the glue sets up. There you go guys, there is the table all done in its most basic form. There is plenty of room for customization with this table design. So I've already got ideas. I'm sure you've got ideas. Man, ideas are flowing like, like water in a rainstorm. So use this as inspiration to see how you get creative. If you make this and you design it and change it, find me, hit me up on Facebook, show me a picture. I'd love to see how you guys change this and make it unique and work for you. I appreciate you guys watching as always. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. Otherwise, take care and I'll see you next time in the workshop. A little behind the scenes for you guys who are still around and you're wondering because you saw the thumbnail, you saw the build and you're like, wait a second. I robbed the caster from the corner at the very back to put in the front center. So the pictures and the final ooh ah video looks good. There's not just some leg hanging out there like he forgot. Yeah, just so you know.